Now that I've collected all the data in task 1, here I've added it to a blank QGIS map document, and I'll take a moment to familiarize myself with the data and what information it contains. As with any project, I'll have to do some data preparation to make it useful for the analysis. So first off, I want to order these layers appropriately in the Layers panel. So I'm going to leave Burn at the top, but I want to drag Roads Inventory to be the second layer in the list. And I'm going to drag Jurisdiction as the bottom layer in the list. Now I can see all the data layers. I also want to review the coordinate reference system for all these data sets. I can see that they're all lining up well, but I can also see down here that on the fly transformation is enabled. And so they may be in different spatial reference systems. And for an analysis, I'm going to need them all to be in the same spatial reference system. So I'll double click on burn and open up the layer properties. And I can see that this is in a geographic coordinate system, NAT83 Harn. I'll double click on roads inventory. And I can see this is in New Mexico State Plain Central. The census tract layer is also in a geographic WGS84 coordinate system. And let's look at jurisdiction. That's in New Mexico State Plain Central. So I have data sets in two different spatial reference systems. For this analysis, I'm going to want all the data to be in New Mexico State Plain Central. And just to reiterate this, this projection on the fly feature is fine for cartographic purposes. However, when I'm conducting a spatial analysis, all the layers involved have to be in the same CRS to get accurate results. Typically, data layers will also need to be clipped to the extent of the study area to reduce data rendering time and data processing time. So these procedures are often referred to as normalizing your data. For the typical analysis, most of the time is spent obtaining and normalizing it. I think, you know, in my experience, normally you can spend usually half to three quarters of the time on a project just getting the data and normalizing it and getting it ready for analysis. So once all the data is organized and normalized, the analysis is often very straightforward. So I'm going to move forward and put all four layers into the same coordinate reference system, New Mexico State Plain Central. So I'm going to right click on Burn in the table of contents and from the context menu choose Save As. I'm going to choose Browse and I'm going to save this to the lab data folder and I'll use a naming convention. I'll just use SPCS after this layer name so that I know that this extra copy of the burn shape file is in state plane. Next I'm going to choose the CRS that I want this new layer in and I'm going to, from my recently used coordinate reference systems, choose EPSG 2903 which is the New Mexico State Plane Central. Click OK. I want to make sure that add saved file to the map is checked and then I'll click OK. QGIS is done. It's created the new shape file. I'm now going to right click on the burn shape file and choose remove from the context menu. I no longer need this layer. I can just use the new version of it in state plane. I'm going to repeat this procedure for the census tracts layer. So again I'll choose save as, click the browse button, use my same naming convention, and call this SPCS or end it with an underscore SPCS rather. Select my coordinate reference system. Choose the same 2903 State Plain New Mexico Central. Make sure add save file to map is checked and click OK. Q just has now reprojected that. I'll again right click on the original layer that was in geographic and choose remove. Finally I want to make sure my map is in the same coordinate reference system. So I'm going to right click on one of these layers and set project CRS from layer. I can see now my map is in EPSG 2903 and all four of my data layers are all in the same coordinate reference system. For the final map for this project I'll need a polygon that represents the county boundary. Turn these top two layers off. This blue census tract layer collectively defines the county boundary. So what I'll do is use a dissolve spatial analysis technique to create a county boundary from those census tracts. So I'm going to go to the vector menu to geoprocessing tools and choose dissolve. The input layer for this is going to be the census tract layer. And you can dissolve based on attributes. For example, if you had 
counties of the United States, you could dissolve them based on the state name attribute and create a state boundaries layer from those counties. But here I'm going to dissolve all the track polygons into one to create the county boundary. So for the dissolve field, I'm going to go down to the bottom and choose dissolve all. Then I'll specify an output shape file. I'll navigate to my lab folder. I'll put it into the my data folder. I'm going to call this Bernalillo County dot shape. Click Save. And I want to make sure that add result to canvas is checked, and then I'll click OK. QGIS is finished. I can click Close. I can turn off my original track layer, and now I can see that it's dissolved that to create one polygon boundary. So I can remove my census tracks. I no longer need that layer. I was just using that to generate my county boundary. Next, I want to filter the monuments, which is the, the burn SPCS layer, so that I only have the ones with the orders and classes I'm interested in. So I'm interested in an elevation order of one, last recovered on or after 1995, and ones that have satellite observations used for monument coordinate determination. So to do this, I'm going to double click on this layer. And from the general tab, I'm going to be working with this feature subset section. This is where I can define the contents of a layer based on the attributes. It's a way to filter a layer. So here I can write a SQL query to filter the data. So I'm going to click the Query Builder button to open up the Query Builder window. Along the left you have all the attribute columns in the layer, and then here are a bunch of operators that I can use to form my SQL expression. So the first parameter is Elevation Order. If I scroll down, I'll find the field Elev Order. So I'm going to double click on that and it'll place that column into the filter expression window. Since I want elevation order equal to 1, I'll click the equals operator and I can use this button here all to see all the values in the elev order field and I'll double click on 1 to finish populating the first part of the expression, elev order equals 1. And when creating these SQL expressions there is syntax. You can see that the attribute column is surrounded by double quotes and the value is surrounded by single ticks. So it's best to double click your way through building your expression so that you avoid any syntax errors. Since I want monuments that have both an elevation order of 1 and were last recovered on or after 95, I'll now use the AND operator. So I'm going to double click, or single click AND rather, to populate that into my expression. The AND operator selects records that meet conditions on both sides of the expression. So now, after this AND operator, I'll form the other part of this query dealing with the last recovered column. That data is in this last RECV column, so I'll double click that to put that into my expression window. Then I'm going to use the greater than operator, and I'm going to get all of the results in here. And since I want more recently than 1995, I'm going to scroll down to until I find an attribute column just before 95, 1994. I'm going to double click that. So last received greater than 1994. So at the moment, for a record to be selected, it has to have an elev order equal 1 and a value in this last recovered column greater than this. Finally, I'll add another AND and create the final part of the expression dealing with satellite observations. That data is in this sat use column, so I'll double click that. I'll click the all to see what values are in there. And I want to select monuments that were using satellite observations. So I want the ones with a value of yes. So I'll use an equal down here, and then double click on the Y. So now my expression basically reads that I'm going to select monuments with an elevation order equal to 1, last recovered on or since 1995, and use satellites for monument determination. I can use the test button to see how my SQL query is working. If you have any syntax errors, you'll get an error there, so that'll be a, a clue that you need to fix your SQL expression. Here I'm getting that the clause returned 47 rows, which I know is the correct answer in this case, so that's good. I'll click OK, and then click OK on this. Let me turn my layer on so I can see it, and I have a much smaller subset of those monuments. And it's always a good idea to open up the attribute table when you've done this, and just double check that everything has gone according to plan.
So, for example, in the satellite use column, I want to make sure those are all yeses. In the elevation order column, I want those to be all ones. And in the last recovered, I want to make sure if I sort these that they're all since 1995, which they are. So it looks like this was done correctly. In the next task, you learn how to use buffering and clipping operations to identify monuments within the city limits.